The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And year in, year out. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Remember, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. Season after season, at market after market, independent tobacco experts, men who are right on the spot at the auctions, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. Fine tobacco that means real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 59, American. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you... Wait a minute, wait a minute, Donzie. Hold it, hold it. Jackson ain't here yet. What? Neither is Dennis or Livy. Oh, my goodness, this is awful. What do you mean, awful? The audience is going to get a break today. I've been waiting for a chance like this for months. Hit it, boys. One, two. She's frying eggs and broiling hammy, and that's what I like about the South. Now, there you can make no mistake, he where those nerves are never shaky. Oh. Rochester, Rochester. Yes, sir. Step on it, will you? Can't you make this car go any faster? Boys, did you ever hear the story of the hare and the tortoise? Yes. Well, both of them just passed us. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, what tough luck. Imagine going out to the garage and finding a flat tire. Not a bit of air in it. It was the new one, too. It had to be the new one. Huh? The other three are filled with sand. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. <laughs> Rochester, why have you got the windshield wipers going? We have no windshield. I know, but it keeps the steam from the radiator out of my face. <laughs> no. Let's say, boss, I think we're making better time. I just caught up with the rabbit that passed us. Rochester, don't be silly. There are no rabbits on Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. What's up, Doc? <laughs> well, what do you know? I guess the warm weather brought them out. Isn't it? Gosh, it isn't bad enough I'm late. Mary and Dennis are waiting for us to pick them up. Boss, you should be on air right now. I know, I know. Turn on the radio and see what they're doing. Okay. Here comes old Bob with all the news The box back coat and the button shoes But all paid up with his union dues And that's what I like about the sound Isn't that awful? Here Turn it off Roy, dump. <laughs> <laughs> That song is enough to make a Yankee Out of Senator Claghorn <laughs> Pull over the corner, Roger. This is where we're supposed to pick up Dennis. Mary. <laughs> oh, there's Dennis now. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hop in, Dennis. We're late. I know. I was home listening to the radio, and Phil was singing, That's What I Like About the South. I know, I know. My mother said she wished a little bit of heaven would fall from out the sky and hit him right on the head. <laughs> Well, for once in my life, I agree with your mother. She hates you, too. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, Rochester, let's go. Oh, Jack, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Hop in. Jack, we've never been this late before. What happened? Well, we were all ready to go to the studio, and when we got to the garage, we found a flat tire. I really should have called for a taxi. Call for a taxi? You wouldn't call for help if it had a meter on it. First place, you read that line wrong. I know. <laughs> Supposed to be, you wouldn't call for help if it had a meter on it. <laughs> I was even afraid of that today, this morning. I was... What do 
are you talking? I've taken you home from the studio in a cab many times. Oh, stop bragging. It only costs 75 cents. 75 cents. The other night when I took you home, it cost me $3 and a half. Well, it was your idea to go up on Mulholland Drive. <laughs> well, don't let it go to your head, sister. I only, only, I only took you up there to show you how beautiful the city looks with the lights on. I know. When the fog rolled in, you wanted your money back. <laughs> money back, money back. Stop making things up. I went up to Mulholland Drive three nights in a row with my girl. And, oh, boy, did we have fun. <laughs> Why, what... What did you do, kid? We went around peeking into new Studebakers. <laughs> Dennis. One of them had 1,800 miles on it. <laughs> that must have been a thrilling evening you had. Say, hey, Jack. We're so late. Do you think Don can hold the audience till we get there? Phil is entertaining him. I wonder what he's doing now. Rochester, turn on the radio. So listen to your boy whose hair is flaxen. Loosen your tie and start relaxing. When Harris is here, who needs Jackson? Because I'm what you like about the South. Who needs Jackson? What I mean? Turn it Let's off. Let's go see my... <laughs> Rochester, you can park any place now. There's the studio up ahead. Jack, why don't you spend 15 cents and put the car in the parking lot? Because the streets belong to the people, and I'm a people. <laughs> Rochester, what's the matter with you? You just passed a good parking place over there. I uh, know, but that's on our right, boss. This car only turns left. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. The steering rod's broken. Well, if this car won't turn to the right, how are we going to get back to Beverly Hills? I got it all mapped out, Miss Livingston. We go straight to Pasadena, left to Bakersfield, left to Oxnard, and down the coast and home. <laughs> Oh, we'll get home, all right. Once we get to Carthay Circle, we can head in any direction there. <laughs> now, keep your eyes open for a place to... Dennis, we're not on a parade. Stop sitting on top of the seat. Huh? And take that sign off your back. Well, I want it there. You don't need it. Everybody knows you've got two shows. <laughs> now, sit down on the... Whoop, whoop. There's a... Whoop, whoop. What are you whoop, whooping about? Rochester, there's a place to park right across the street. Can't do it, boss. I'll have to make a U-turn. Well, what's wrong with making a U-turn? There's a $2, two, two, two dollar double charge. <laughs> There's a $2 trouble charge, charge for that. No more. Boy, all I ask is one rehearsal. That's all I ask. <laughs> well, go ahead. Nobody's looking. Now, grab hold of your door, Mary, so it won't fly open. The door's on your side. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, here we are. Uh-oh, is that a policeman? It ain't Uncle Remus. <laughs> The cop, all right. Shut the motor off. <laughs> Gee. Well, what are you gonna do, Jack? Oh, I'll think of something. Hey, you! The idea of making a U-turn in the middle of the block. Eh? <laughs> I said, what's the idea of making a U-turn in the middle of the block? Don't you know it's against the law? Well, I'll tell you, officer, I don't get the city very often, so I don't know much about your new fangled laws you got here. <laughs> <laughs> What a performance. <laughs> Esri, be quiet. You see, officer, I live out Sherman Oaks way, and I just drove my old lady and my boy in to see the big city. Patooey. <laughs> Ain't that right, Miranda? You're darn tootin', Patooey. <laughs> Thank goodness we have no windshield. <laughs> officer, this is the missus. Oh, uh, glad to know you, ma'am. Now look, old timey, you gotta obey the traffic laws while you're in the city. Well, I'll tell you. Get your gun, Paul. That man's a revenuer. <laughs> Well, officer, guess we'll mosey along. Thanks very much for your advice. All right, old timer, but don't let this happen again. I won't. So long, officer. So long. Come on, Mo and Esri. Let's take a look at this radio station, see what those programmies are like. And Zeke, you sit here and wait for it. Zeke. 
Me. Who? Me? <laughs> yes, you. Come on, Mary. The cop's gone now. Let's get into the studio. Dennis, hurry up. Right behind you, Pa. I'm going. <laughs> Dennis, you're not a rube anymore. Put your shoes back on. Fifteen years on the radio, and it's the first time I've ever been late. Thank goodness we got here anyway. She's got baked beans and candy yams, those sugar cured Virginia hands. All right, baked Phil, all right, I'm here, I'm here. I like. Well, Phil, I'm here, you can stop. What do you mean, stop, Jackson? I'm just getting warmed up. Warmed up? You've been singing that thing for 20 minutes. I've been listening to you on the radio. You've been listening to me? Certainly. Well, bless your little gray heart. <laughs> all right, Phil, you had your big day. Now go sit down. Oh, Jack, what happened? How come you're so late? Oh, it's a long story, Don. I had a flat tire, and then I got tied up in traffic, and Rochester didn't know what he was talking about. And right out here in front of the studio... <laughs> <laughs> Well, he was nervous, you know, a cop coming. You can blame him. You know. <laughs> then right out here in front of the studio, a c cop tried to give me a ticket. I told him I was Jack Benny. He changed his mind fast. Didn't he, Mary? But do we? <laughs> oh, stop that. Now, look, kids, the show is so mixed up, we'll have to start somewhere. So, Dennis, maybe you ought... Wait a minute. Phil. Phil. What's the matter? What are you, uh, your, excuse the expression, musicians dressed like that for? <laughs> Huh? Oh, that. Well, a photographer's coming over to take some publicity shots, and I told the boys that if they look glamorous, they might get their pictures in Esquire. Look, Phil, your boys will never get their pictures in Esquire. So you can tell Frankie to put down that white telephone and take off that low-cut sweatshirt. <laughs> and tell him to cover up that tattoo on his chest. Are you kidding? He gets paid for that. I know, but it's such a ridiculous tattoo. This is the year of the yearly. What a slogan, the year of the yearly. What about the slogan they had for your picture? Mary. This is the week of the weakling. <laughs> that shows how much you know it didn't even run a week. Now look, kids, before we start our play for tonight, I think Dennis... <laughs> what's that? Jack, there's a man in the third row with a gun. Hey, mister, what's the idea? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I tried to shoot myself, but I missed. Well, wh what's wrong? I'm a dentist, and my patient is driving me crazy. Your patient? Her name is Nora Prentice, and she won't open her mouth. <laughs> he must be crazy. A few minutes ago, he was a rabbit. Sing, <laughs> Dennis. <laughs>
that was That was How Are Things in Glockamora Sung by Dennis Day And Dennis, that was a cute little Irish number Not as cute as the one I took up on Mulholland Drive <laughs> Well Has she got a friend? Yes, but you wouldn't like him Oh <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen For our feature Hmm Come in Pardon the intrusion, Mr. Benny, but could you do me please a favor? Oh, why, certainly, certainly, Mr. Kitzel. Hello, what is it? Well, I got two tickets to a radio program here at NBC, and I don't know what studio it's in. Oh, uh, well, what program is it? Edgar Bernstein. <laughs> oh, Edgar Bergen. Uh -huh. Edgar Bergen, yeah. He's in Studio A right across the hall. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I, I, I know you like Edgar's show, that Charlie McCarthy is really funny. Yes, and he looks so natural, too. Almost like a human being. <laughs> That's right. As yes. Many people mistake Charlie for a little boy. Yes, I know. Once when I was by his broadcast, I went up to him and I said, Please, Mr. McCarthy, could I have your autograph? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you felt silly. Who felt silly? He gave it to me. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. But you know, he's certainly comical, that Charlie McCarthy. And, and so is the other little dummy, Mortimer Schwartz. <laughs> That's Snurr. Oh, you, you By the way, Mr. Kitzel, I, I meant to thank you for the birthday card you sent me. It was very thoughtful and it expressed such nice sentiment. Yes, and I wrote that poem myself. What was the poem, Mr. Kitzel? Well, it went like this to Mr. Benny. Today I hear you're 38, but I know you're 53. <laughs> but if you're liking 38, that's okay by me. <laughs> well, it was a very... Well, it was a very cute thought. Mr. Kitzel, in case you happen to pass my house during the next few days, drop in. I'll mix you a martini. A martini? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh you like martinis? No. <laughs> Well, anyway, Mr. Kitzel, if you're around when I leave, I'll drive you home. Yeah, well, thank you, but don't bother, Mr. Benny. You see, I got my own car, a new studio baker. You have? Mm hmm It's got exactly 1,800 miles on it. <laughs> 1,800? Dennis, that must have been the car you peeked into. Ho, ho, ho! Dennis! Bye, Mr. Benny. So long, Mr. Kitzel. Now our kings in Glocky Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, he's a nice little guy I'm sorry I forgot to invite him to my birthday party Oh, that reminds me, Jack It's been a whole week now And you never thanked me for the birthday present I sent you Oh, I'm sorry, Mary Thanks very much It was a wonderful gift I really appreciated it What'd you give him, Livy? A check for $10 Well, Mary, it, was, it wasn't the sentiment It was the money I mean, it wasn't the money It was the check I mean, the sentiment <laughs> Now, come on, kids. We have a check, a sketch to do. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight... Oh, Jack, before you start the sketch, don't you think we ought to do a commercial? <laughs> but just one color. One color. That's all I ask. One man read a line right. That's all I ask. Thirteen years he's been with <laughs> What were you going to say, Don? Well, I say, uh, before you start the sketch, don't you think we ought to do a commercial? A commercial? Well, yeah. what a start me an original idea. <laughs> yes, Don, by all means, uh, means, let's be doing... <laughs> let's, be doing let's, be, let's be daring... Let's be daring... Let's be daring and do a commercial. <laughs> okay, Jack. The quartet's ready. The what? The quartet? The quartet? Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Don, wait a minute. No quartet and no more singing. That's final. But, Jack... Look, Don, since we opened our season 22 weeks ago, the sportsman quartet has been driving me nuts. It isn't bad enough what they do to me in the studio. But two weeks ago, you brought them right out on the street, right out on the corner in front of NBC, in front of a crowd of people, and embarrassed me something awful. Imagine them singing a commercial and people throwing money. Pennies. How much was it, Jack? $4.67. <laughs> I'm smart, Alec, through a slot. So, Don, let's not talk about it anymore. The quartet is through. They'll never sing for me again. Jack, I know I've asked you many times to give these boys one more chance, and I'm going to ask again, but just this once. Don, look. And I'm... if you don't like it this time, you can fire them, and I give you my word of honor, I'll not interfere. 
Well, all right, Don. If you really mean what you said, it's a deal. I'll give these boys one more chance. Remember, fellas, this is your last chance. Is that clear? <laughs> all right, Don. Okay, their number is humoresque. Take it, boys, and remember, your job depends on it. Go ahead. L-S-L-S-M-F-T means find the bag, oh, don't you see? It's not bad. Yes, L-S-L-S-M-F-M-F-T, <laughs> my darling. <laughs> that was if you wish to spell. It's merely T-F-M-S-L. Backwards? So round, so firm, so It's not bad at all. Oh, very good. Very good. Hatch, hatch, pull me back. A rasmuth has get with it, Joe. Drop it, you must Down. suck it. A little bit of heaven is LSMFP. Ice, give me a piece of pipe. John, look. Oh, John, that isn't what I want. John, that isn't what I want to try. There is nothing quite to like a lucky. John, that isn't what I want. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute, fellas. That's not it at all. We know. So we say, if so fast, wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. 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 Wait a Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, fellas. I've had enough. That was it. You had your chance, and you're, you're through making a fool out of me. You're fired. Drew, now get out. Out! <laughs> well, at last I'm through with them. And Don, don't you open your mouth or you go with them. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Jack. What? If you ask me, I think you're making a big mistake firing your quartet. I didn't ask you. And now... Livy's right, Jackson. <laughs> huh? Livy's right, Jackson. You should never have fired those guys. Huh? They're harmony. It's great. Phil... When you're talking about pool, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> when we're talking about bourbon, I'll bow to your superior judgment. <laughs> Even when we're, if we're talking about new hairdos, I'll acquiesce. <laughs> but when it comes to music and harmony, I'd rather take the word of Lassie's other pup. And now, ladies and gentlemen... I think you're right, Mr. Benny. You bet I'm right. I'm glad you're on my side, Dennis. The other side wouldn't have me. <laughs> well, right. And the quartet is fired, and that's settled. Now, let's get on with the play. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight... Oh, now what? Come in. How do you do, folks? I'm the photographer from Downbeat Magazine. I'm here to take pictures of Phil Harris's band. Wait a minute, mister. We're trying to do a program. Why are you taking pictures of Harris's orchestra? Oh, they just won a popularity contest that was conducted by our magazine. A contest? Yes. We stopped ten people on the street and asked them who their favorite band was. Uh-huh. And all eleven voted for Phil Harris. <laughs> you stopped ten people and eleven of them voted for Phil? One of them had two heads. <laughs> That I can believe. Hey, wait a minute, Bob. Wait a minute. We ain't posing for just anybody. Are you a good photographer? Oh, I'm one of the best in the business. I have some pictures here that I've taken of my children. Here, look at them. No, look, we haven't time. Oh, Jack, look at these pictures. Aren't they cute? How old is this little boy? Uh, that's Irving. He's seven. And this little fellow is Julius. He's five. Hmm. Well, how about this cute little girl? The smallest one on the end. That's my wife. She's a midget. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I, I didn't mean to be rude, that is. Oh, I... that's all right. Quite frequently, I get my wife mixed up with the children. Really? <laughs> yes, only this morning I fed her a bowl of pablum, threw over my shoulder, and burped her. <laughs> oh. I didn't realize she was my wife till her teeth dropped on the floor. <laughs> her teeth? Hey, what about taking the pictures? My boys are getting nervous. All right, everybody smile now. Watch the birdie. One, two, three... Click. Got it. Good, good. Now, if you don't mind, we'll get on with our show. Uh, just a minute. Before I leave, would you mind if I took a picture of your quartet? <laughs> My quartet? Why? Just to keep for myself. I think they're wonderful. Oh, you do, eh? Well, if you want a picture of my quartet, you can go outside and look for them. I just fired them. You fired them? Yes. You fool, you! <laughs> what? You mean old man! I am not a mean old man, and get out! Nobody's going to come in here and tell me how to run my business. But, Jack... Wait a minute, Mary. Now, wait a minute. 
I've got something to say to you and everybody in the company, and you might as well hear it. I've been on the radio for 15 years. I've always had my own show. I've always run my own show. And I'm going to keep on running it. And you, Don, Dennis, or Phil, or nobody else in the world is going to tell me what to do. And that's final. Any questions? Why do you wear those thick glasses? <laughs> Because they don't cost any more than the thin one. That's why. Right. Now, let's get on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen... Oh, darn it, the phone. Mary, answer it, please. Okay. Hello? Yes? Yes, sir, he's right here. Who is it, Mary? Uh, Jack, it's Mr. Vincent Riggio, president of the American Tobacco Company. Oh, oh, my sponsor. Uh, hello, Vince. Vincent? Oh, Mr. Riggio. <laughs> Well, what, uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Riggio? You've been listening to the show? Wasn't it great? Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have what? But I had to fire him. That quartet was the worst. You, you don't think so? Well, everybody's entitled to his own opinion. I mean, that's why they put rubber mats around cuspidors. <laughs> <laughs> what? I guess you're right. It didn't get a laugh here, either. <laughs> but about the quartet, Mr. Riggio, I felt that... I know, but... But, Mr. Riggio... I know, but... Yes, but... You might be right, but... 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 But I know, but 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 <laughs> But But, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Mr. Riggio, but, Mr. Riggio. Back with the back of just a minute, the first is my good friend Basil Rysdale. The back of auctioneer, remember LSMFT. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. Listen to the words of a man who's been an independent tobacco auctioneer for 21 years, Mr. Dewey H. Huffeen of Reedsville, North Carolina. Mr. Huffeen really knows tobacco, and here's what he said. At thousands of tobacco auctions, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy mild, ripe, mellow tobacco that tastes good and smokes good. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 29 years. Quote, at thousands of tobacco auctions, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy mild, ripe, mellow tobacco. Unquote. Remember, the independent tobacco experts like Mr. Huffeen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, first, last, always. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. No doubt about it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real, deep down, smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. But... <laughs> but... But, Mr. Riggio, well, all right, if you want a quartet, I'll have to think it over. 